Russia. That's a, that was a deliberate experiment where they thought that it would have controlled snakes and cane fields, etc. Well, <laughs> it didn't quite do the job. Mongols tend to go after easier prey than snakes. And so, uh, the small Asian mongoose, the black or ship rat, and the opossum, or locally called maniku in some cases, have all impacted native birds, amphibians, and reptile populations in the region. And have also impacted on vegetation and even health standards, leptospirosis, etc. These were not native to the region, they were brought in coincidentally. Um, and the mongoose in particular is um, thought to be responsible for the disappearance of various birds, reptiles, and amphibians. What about mice? What about mice? I was stunned when I saw this picture. This is from an island called Goth in the South Atlantic. And you have mice eating this bird that's bigger than a chicken, eating it from the outside in, alive. Mice can be carnivores, and they, they are a problem. So for some offshore islands where they've managed to make it, um, both rats and mice uh, have to be eradicated, and fortunately we have a, a couple of strategies where that is being addressed. But then again, they can be transported by yachts and ships and all this other means. You recognize this one? <laughs> all right. 18th January this year, this North American raccoon arrived in St. Lucia via a shipping container out of Florida. <laughs> the container was delivered to the client, and while being unstuffed on the site, the raccoon was discovered alive. The container was quickly shut, and pest management controls called in to dispatch of the animal. It had survived some seven days at sea. Now, if you have something the size of a raccoon in a container surviving that, what else can't do it? It's certainly reptiles, your iguanas. So much more can survive in this thing. So it just goes to show you some of the gaps that can occur. These are some of the other accidental introductions that we've had. Um, from Central America, common green iguana, there's a case where um, these green iguanas were introduced via somebody's microwave, they, sm they smuggled them in, yeah, and now they are escaped into the southwest portion of St. Lucia and, and it's, they're spreading really, really quickly, and they're a big problem in Puerto Rico. They're a concern, especially to the, the international airport, because they get out onto the runways, and they affect agriculture, and just problems all around. Cane toad, crapo, known locally to us. Um, big problem for the Caribbean, also in Australia, where nothing eats this animal, and it can eat pretty much everything else. Birds, eggs, chicks, and everything. Boa constrictor introduced to Aruba. April 1999, 1999. Um, government euthanization program deemed ineffective and it's preying on everything else. Your island becomes very impoverished when you have introduction of invasive alien species. Um, Guam in the, in the Pacific had the brown tree snake come in and they lost 10 species of their birds there, and their forests went silent, and it took a while for them to realize what was killing off the birds. Also, plants can become invasive. Some people go to different islands, and they like this particular flower or whatever. They take a cutting, and they're not going to declare it to customs, but they know what it's about. So they wrap it up in the clothing, and they, whatever, they get it and past the customs officer, past the um, quarantine officers, and they plant it 
Next thing you know, birds take the fruit, the seeds, and so on, and it becomes a problem to Ministry of Agriculture, who then has to find the resources, the legal finances, legal resources in the Caribbean to address these agricultural problems. Oh, everybody knows this one now. Once you're from the Caribbean, you're really familiar with this one because this might be the only fish available for us to eat if it keeps up. You know, um, as, as I said, I was working on a project with the World Bank in St. Lucia, and when it started in 2009, there was no record of the lionfish. By 2011, it was in our waters. And, see. Origins of infestation. One of the suspects, ballast water. Um, through the transfer of eggs and larvae and juveniles, um, maybe adults from Western Pacific. Container ships use pump water in and out of their holes for stabilization while at sea. This water exchange typically occurs in the port where cargo is loaded, slash unloaded. The fish could have been sucked up with this mouse water, as it's called, as juveniles or babies, and then deposited in the West. The other scenario is that this was an accident through um, aquarium release. Uh, lionfish are a favorite amongst the marine recreational um, folks, and so many of them had them, in, and the demand was very high at one time. And as the fish grew too large, they were presumed to have been released into the wild, and some may have been sexually mature. Um, it is also believed that Hurricane Andrew in 1991 flooded out some of these areas and caused, triggered the release. Here you see what the distribution, this is 1992, 2009, 2013. This is what an invasive species does when it has nothing in its ecosystem to control it. It takes over and there's nothing to get in its way. Other marine um, species of interest, green mussel, known to um, clog pipes and um, fouling systems, and also green algae, used um, quite commonly in the aquarium trade, again introduced into the local conditions, and um, is now on the west coast of the USA, and is threatening native flora and decreases species abundance in the wild. Basically, when a species is going to be coming into a region, you want to do something like what you call a risk analysis. If somebody's going to deliberately introduce a species, you, you conduct this risk analysis. Um, because normally, a species would have to overcome a number of barriers for it to establish itself and become um, successful. First, you have geographical and environmental barriers and then any dispersal barriers to overcome. So, the points are that the earlier we can stage an intervention, the greater the chances of effectively preventing environmental and economic impacts from species. Effectively then, prevention is the most cost-efficient and effective method against invasive alien species. Halting the establishment of of, of such species in the first place is our line of defense. What can governments do? Conduct customs checks, inspect shipments, conduct risk assessments, and set quarantine regulations to try and limit the entry of invasive species. However, global inspection and risk analysis capacity is usually not sufficient. This is according to the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity. Private sector for example, the shipping industry has a role to play, and it must be proactive in supporting and enforcing policies and measures that could support government efforts to combat the spread of invasive alien species. They should play a part in monitoring vulnerable pathways and implementing measures where possible. For instance, if you know the horticultural trade is vulnerable, pet trade, agricultural produce, and of 
across the wider maritime industry, yachting, etc. This introduces the subject of biosecurity. It's a set of preventative measures designed to reduce the risk of transmission or spread of